lines are lit up. Let's go to line one. What's up, D of H? You sound like a bank. D of H, I like that. Uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, sort hey, of. Uh, you know, you're, mention, you're mentioning that uh, when you drive by the uh, the golf course there in Munster, the garbage dump, right? all the flames coming out of it, and why doesn't somebody use that for heat? That's what I see. Yeah, exactly. A guy tried to do that down in uh, Lake Village. You know, they tried to build that that plant that uh, consumes garbage to make ethanol. Right. But instead of actually harnessing it, we just rather let it burn off into the air and not do anything with it. So you're, it's you're saying it can be done. It's been done before. Well, there are plants. They take they take garbage. Take garbage they take and, right. roughage, as in vegetable matter and sure. things like that. Right. Brass clippings and all that, and they make ethanol out of it. Uh, well, why aren't we you know, doing that here? Why, why, what's the problem there? Why you know, aren't we doing that? And, it, it, it's been a big mess. If, if you've been listening, that you know this plant's been supposed to be going on for the last three years, and funding fell through twice, and it, it's all the, with the, the solid waste commission in the area, and uh, you know nobody wants to invest in it. I, I guess they just don't get enough government subsidies like Exxon Mobil does to be able to do that. I think, why don't you just run a couple uh, water pipes through it, heat up that water, and build a pool out there, and we could all have a nice hot water pool all year long. Yeah, you know, you see these uh, these uh, um, heat exchangers. You could buy them. They're wood-powered. They sell, you know, they're primarily, you see them down in Couts and Wheatfield and in Cedar Lake and things. Right. And there actually is water that goes through there, and you heat it with wood. You know, right, you burn exactly. wood, and it's like a big boiler is what it is. Exactly. You know, I actually had that idea. When I lived in Los Angeles, I had a jacuzzi, and I thought, hey, if I just had a good I, – I grew up we, – we had this club. There's a bunch of guys from the, on the south side of East Chicago, and we used to have a, a pot – gang. Uh, well, back then, they were clubs. Now, we, <laughs> we were all good – we all were like hunter and fisherman type of kids, and we all hung out together, and we sold beer to ourselves to, uh, nice. to uh, make money. But um, we had a pot belly stove, and we did get that thing so red hot. We'd literally be sitting in, in the dead of winter, our shirts off, the doors wide open, because it got we got that thing that hot. And I thought, you can do that. The same thing with all that, that flame that's coming out of there. Sure. And uh, heat, heat, you know, water somehow and use that uh, to either turn a turbine, is, I guess, for steam or just... Is, uh, is, is that the infamous garage you talked about in the past? It is. The garage. We had it in the back of uh, uh, Russell Bregger's house was the first. His dad was a cop uh, in East mm -hmm. Chicago for many years. And uh, like I said, we all were into hunting and fishing, and we and uh, we did a lot of illegal beer drinking back then. I think we were probably like uh, 14, 15, 16. So it's only we, illegal if you get caught. Right. In the USA <laughs> exactly. today, more drilling of oil does not equal lower gas prices, which it should. That makes common sense. You have more oil, the prices should drop. Uh, and here's my thinking on that. Should it be a law that American oil has to stay in America? We're going to go to line three. I believe it's Mad Mac. Is this Mad Mac? Yes, it is, bro. Mad Mac. Are you getting mad or happy today, Mac? You're ki you're killing me is what you're doing. Really? Listen, what? you voted for Obama. You, I like, you know what's amazing? Call. How you know everything about me, yet we've never met. How do you Dude, know I, I voted for Obama? I'll tell you what, if I ask you 50 questions and you write down the answers, I'll then write down my answers. I'll pay you $10 for every one you're right. I'll pay myself from you $1 every one I'm right. I'll beat you by a, by a ratio of 5 to 1. Well, I know. You, you're a standard liberal, buddy. You're a great guy, great on the radio, <laughs> but you are as liberal as they come. I don't think I am. I told you. I already had the thought of if, if the guy is convicted who killed the woman at the, in the Maryville, uh, that store robbery where he innocently shot the, or he shot this innocent woman twice. I believe if he's found guilty, they should hang him from that store. So is that how a liberal speaks? You just want to bar you just want to barbecue the guy. That's all you're interested in. That's just a food source you're looking at. Come on, <laughs> you have no interest in being a, being a conservative individual. I, I guess now, listen, I, I you think voted each... for hope and change. You got it. Okay. Really? Your boy took every gas, every oil rig out of the Gulf of Mexico. Do you think those guys turn around a multi-billion dollar thing that they've got floating out in the ocean, and they're going to go, oh, we can come back now? Are you kidding? Man, they uplift those things, they're gone. What okay? do you, I, I, you're losing me. What do you mean? They, do I, 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 you lost me on it. What do you mean they, they could come back now? What does that mean? Remember the oil rigs that were, that were bobbing around in the Gulf of Mexico? Right, right. Okay. Obama sent them away. Obama's uh, actually allowed more drilling than ever before. Obama hasn't allowed more drilling. More drilling has occurred 
while he has been the president because of things that were in place prior to that. And I'm against drilling to begin with. I think we should get off oil. What do you what do you what do you think we should do? You think we should put like a well, here's, windows here's, on here's, jet airplane? Here's How one is of that my, gonna work? Here's one of my favorite quotes, and this is from probably a a, a guy you love, uh, Bill Clinton, because we had a, a surplus of money when Bill Clinton was in office, right? So you must like right. him. He cut, he cut the defense by like 90%. Yeah, that, well, that turned out well. Well. Look at, look, at, look at the conditions in the Middle East, right? So go ahead. What did he oh. say? What's his quote? All right. Here's what happened. He said, man did not keep, quit using rocks. You know, caveman did not quit using rocks because he ran out of rocks. They found something better, like, a, you know, a spear, all that. And I okay. think what we need, we do, we, there are alternate sources out there. And if everyone got behind them, they would be cost effective and we could get off of oil, and then we wouldn't have to go to the Middle East because the only reason we're there to begin with is we want the oil, and we want to be near the oil. If not, right, there's no doubt. Yeah, there, if not, those people could wither and die, and we wouldn't care. That's a fact. So right, absolutely. why not take all the – and here's, why I, here's my theory on why it's not happening is, is the CEOs in charge of these oil companies now, and they would still make money because they, would st they have the distribution there, and, and, and they know how to do that business. They they don't want to spend the money like you know if you own a company and you have to go buy all new equipment, well that yeah. year you're going to show a big loss for that year or the next year until you start regaining that money back right. They don't want right. to show they don't want to show that loss while they're they're in charge, because their stock prices might go down and all that. So no one wants to take that initial hit to switch over and get off the of oil. I think Gloria Lynn, Gloria Lynn. Gloria Lynn, are you going to be nice to me today or no? Well, I think you're a little confused. I am confused. Medicaid and Medicare are two separate entities. Medicare, right. you, you have a choice to either buy it or you don't have to have it. Oh, really? You can you not have Medicare? You don't have to buy Medicare. Oh, really? Oh, and when you get old or if you get disabled, right, uh, uh, right away A is you know, that's A, everybody gets that, but you got to have the hospitalization. Now, Medicaid are for the people that are uh, mostly on welfare, low income, and things of that sort. Also, when the avalanche comes, that's what the problem is. They bill so much to Medicaid, and Medicaid may pay $6. You know, it's $100. Right. And they only take you to the nearest hospital, even if they privatize it. Because even if you got sick and, you know, you wouldn't want to go all the way, I don't know where you live, but say you lived here in Gary. You wouldn't want to run to the community. You'd want to go to the newest hospital to get relief, and then you call your doctor. Right. So Medicare, you pay for that. Is a hundred and fourteen dollars a month. But someone's so, subsidizing that, uh, now, obviously, right? Wait a minute, and then if you have, then you have insurance. You have your own insurance that I pay for. My Blue Cross right. and Blue Shield. That's two seventy-five. Okay, a lot of people get to subsidize from these uh, companies, but when you go back to the WPA, you're hearing it all from hearsay. 